The oceanic white tip is a little bit like the mako in the sense that it's a pelagic uh, oceanic shark, but even more so than the, the mako, this is a species that absolutely stays in oceanic waters. The oceanic white tip grows to nearly 13 feet long, weighing up to 400 pounds. It uh, has very large dorsal fins with a bright white tip. Uh, very large pectoral fins with also the white tips on them. Its Latin name, longimanus, meaning long arms, refers to those lengthy pectoral fins which allow it to glide through the water on a perpetual search for food. The large rounded fins on the, on the top and on the sides gives it good maneuverability in the open ocean, helps it stay afloat easier, uh, because remember there's no bottom for these things to sit on. These are swimming every second of their lives. These physical characteristics make the oceanic white tip stand out from other sharks. But as a predator, its ocean habitat appears as barren as the driest desert. Food is few and far between in the open ocean. It's hard to find it. So when you do, you better take advantage of it rapidly and, and fully. For that reason, oceanic white tip is probably one of the species I'm, I would be most concerned about. Put it this way. If you were in the water with an oceanic white tip, you'd definitely be on the menu. Victims of shipwrecks and plane crashes, even refugees from Cuba and Haiti crossing the Florida Straits, have all been killed and eaten by oceanic white tips. With sharks that live in the open ocean, they're constantly on patrol, and uh, they're looking for some bonanza out there. That's what they depend on, because they might eat once and not feed again for another week, another month, longer sometimes. But what sharks like the oceanic white tip need is an armory of weapons to make the most of any food they do find. So how has 400 million years of evolution equipped them? The typical scenario of a shark in these situations is, is, is the hear sound first as a plane goes down or a boat goes down in, in war in particular, there's explosions. Bubbles from things sinking. People yelling and screaming. It would be havoc, relatively, and they could hear that for, for many kilometers away. As they get closer, then they begin to get smell and, and taste come into play. Uh, blood, vomit, urine species, uh, food, whatever was on the boat, oil. And then as they get closer, uh, sight uh, begins to come into play, as well as uh, the appreciation of movement, which they can sense. 